Welcome to MMA Fancast. My name is Luke Basin, and I am honored to have first time guest of the show, Sean Collins. Welcome to the show, Sean. It's an honor to be here. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm very excited for this. I'm glad you're excited. I'm excited. Uh, we connected to have you on the show through Vince Mosco, your coach, and a guy I've known for a long time in the kickboxing world. And to that point, you have a big kickboxing fight coming up for Stellar Fights, which does both MMA and kickboxing in an MMA cage, June 24th in Delaware. You're currently 4-0 as a kickboxer. You're going to look to stay unbeaten and improve to 5-0. It's a 190-pound fight, so you're a big, strong kickboxer. That's like perfectly kind of that 185 pound in MMA. That, that's kind of your size. What are your thoughts on fighting in a cage? Is it the first time you've done kickboxing in a, in a cage? What are your thoughts on that environment and using the cage versus ropes? I'm very excited to be in a cage. Never been in a cage before, and I'm I don't know how it's going to be, but we're going to find out. All knows, you know, you bounce off the ropes, you use that advantage. Cage can't do that. So I need to figure out how to basically like sit up against Cage if I ever get pressure on there and how the, my fighter could, like my opponent would react if I have him, him up on the cage. So those are like little factors I got to figure out. Um, I could definitely, it's more angles now too because it's not shaped like a square, like a, a regular square. So Octagon can move around a little bit more. I like being up against the rope sometimes, so it's going to feel weird being up against a cage because never really had that feeling. But again, very excited to be in there. Like, not like I'm just a, a normal amateur fighter, so I'm excited to just say I've been able to fight in a cage. Like, not a lot of people could say that, and I'm honored to be in the cage for that. Yeah, th there's a lot of technical things that are slightly different. You're not going to get caught in a corner, either offense or defensive as much. Boxing or kickboxing, if you watch, people get get caught in corners a lot because of the because of the rectangle or the square. So it is certainly uh, a unique situation. But what's cool is your your striking coach, Vince, has done both MMA striking and um, and in rope. So what's it like? And obviously you're not giving techniques away, but what's it like uh, training with him in preparation for this fight and kind of workshopping some of those concerns or some of those opportunities that come up uh, I think you can actually keep somebody up against a cage a little bit easier um, than you can in in a, uh, in a ring. So what what's it like gearing up for the cage versus if it was just another uh, regular rope fight? Well, first off, going in the ring with Vince all the time, uh, yeah, little I... marks nonstop. So I, it's a learning lesson, you know. Like you, iron sharpens iron. You can't you can't be a better fighter without getting that ass beat once in a while. So I truly believe, like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to lose every single time I get in the ring or a cage with Vince, but makes me a better fighter overall, and I like to put that pressure on somebody else. It's on my level. So going with him in the ring, he's a pro boxer. He beats the shit out of me nonstop. I just bite down the mouthpiece, try, just try to keep walking down, just, like, show something so, like, at least he can get a little something out of it, too. And the cage, since I don't have to worry about being taken down, I love that. It's just... I got to figure out how to move differently in the cage versus in the ring. Because in the ring, like how you were saying again, like you could be held up in the corner of the ring. The octagon is a whole lot different. It's a whole different element. I'm still trying to figure that part out. And next couple of weeks, I'm going to figure that out and put it together when I fight in another six weeks. So I'm excited. Yeah, and that's cool. It's cool that you have the mental game plan to know it's six weeks away. You still got a month and a little bit more to kind of fine tune some of those concerns. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, this fight, particularly your opponent and what you want to do or accomplish in that fight uh, for stellar fights. It's kind of this hybrid promotion, which I think is super exciting. So people can see a wide range of, of martial arts, but what are your thoughts coming into it as far as um, how you're going to win, how you like to win. Um, and, and, and obviously being four and oh, as an official kickboxing record, you're you're an up and coming undefeated prospect. So, what are your thoughts on your opponent and this specific fight? I'm excited for this event because it's going to be the largest crowd I've been. So, I definitely want to put on a great performance, great show. Um, for game plan wise, I don't want to throw out too much information, but I'm, I bite down the mouthpiece. I keep walking. I just I don't know. I, I like to like I like a good grind, grunt fight. So, I hope he's ready to get at it because I'm just going to keep walking down. And we'll see how it goes. Uh, obviously, I'm going to put it on as much as I can. Win or lose, I'm still going to keep my head up high and be happy about my performance. 
Well, that's a great mindset coming into that fight. Obviously, you're an entertaining fighter. Uh, you're trained out of a great gym with a great coach. Um, and th th that's always exciting. What's it like? What got you into kickboxing? And what has your journey been like up till this fight? So you're four and out. So take us back to the first time you, you took a karate class or a taekwondo class or a kickboxing class. What got you into striking in the first place? So back in the day, probably in middle school, high school, back when the light heavyweight division for UFC was at its prime, where it had Rashad, Rampage, everybody at their prime. Right there. That's, yep, just that, off the, that got me going. Okay. I was like, I want to be like these guys in a heartbeat. Nice, man. Yeah. That, that opened up the door. I did not officially start striking at all until after college. Um, college football ended for me. So I was like, all right, I need to get my aggression out some way. I love watching this sport, so let me take a stab at it. So I started boxing for six months, then transitioned to jujitsu and Muay Thai slash kickboxing. And then once I went full remote on doing that, I trained for about four to five years before stepping into an actual ring before I started competing. Because I just felt like I was at a level yet to be a, com a competitor. And once I finally felt like I was comfortable enough, that's when I started going on this on the streak. So now I'm 4-0. Um, 2020, I had my second back surgery, so I, I was out for about seven months and then came back and been at it since. And I'm not planning on stopping anytime soon. I just want to keep going for a little bit. Well, I'm glad your back is holding up after that second surgery. What was your position in football and where, where did you have your college football? So I was actually a center my freshman year of college. I was weighing 292 pounds and I played for junior at college. Oh, junior. By senior year, it's 220, so... They weren't happy that I lost all the weight and they transitioned me to be a tight end, which I like tight end a lot more than actually playing center because I could actually go out and catch a ball instead of snapping the ball and getting hit by 300 pound plus men. But it was definitely a great experience. I've, and it taught me a lot. It taught me a lot about teamwork. And that's what, why I love what we still do, like training with all these people. Yeah. Yeah. As a fighter, you go in the ring and it's on you at that point, but you got to surround yourself with great people, like great people that want to, knock your head off. They also want are driven to win. Like without that, I don't think you could be a complete great fighter. Yeah. You, you talk about that team, um, team making people better iron shopping iron in football, but I, I really do think it translates very well in MMA. For, mm -hmm. I always like to say it on this show that even though a fighter fights by themselves, they're not alone in the cage in the sense that they all the hours and a sparring sessions and all that goes with them. Uh, similar to in football, when when the ball's up in the air, and at that point, it literally is just a quarterback and a, and a wide receiver. There's still the whole team that made that come together. And sometimes it's the practice squad that doesn't even get to suit that makes people better in football. And, and if you're a Steelers fan, which you're probably not, but James Harrison was on and off the practice squad for years before he ever transitioned over to obviously becoming the monster all oh, yeah. he was but I, but I think about that and I think man like the practice squad getting no credit whether that be in a, in a gym um or whether that be in uh you know in, in kind of football the the practice squad makes a huge difference whoever you train with um what obviously your body composition was changing quite a bit from 18 to 22 when you were in college what what led you to go from 292 to 220 was that like a personal health decision was it a was it a body change between more padding to more muscle like what was going on with your four years there so completely honest with you um if, after freshman year still 290 and they wanted me to come back at 320 to be uh sure. starting center d3 football i'm not going to be a professional for it so i chose to lose the weight because nobody thought i was attractive so i wanted to lose the weight be able to go on dates and meet girls and whatnot so i kind of gave up the idea of starting at d3 for it so that was, that was the main reason, because I was just, no girl wanted to talk to me. Well, hey, hey, that might have been a, a positive uh, uh, step in the right direction, even right. though maybe it was motivated by by women. But that is that is pretty that is pretty common in the sense of you got to make that decision for D3. I, I was a sort of track athlete at D3. I wouldn't really consider myself a track athlete, but I did become a, a track coach and took um, a, an athlete to uh, Division Three Nationals. And what's interesting is, um, shout out to Crystal Baker, um, incredible, incredible athlete in triple jump, the most pointless jump ever, because it's like, when would you ever use a triple jump? But still, she was absolutely <laughs> incredible. But she married a guy. This is all going to connect, I promise. Still still married, four kids. They're, they're great. But 
his name's Nick, and he was, I think he was a guard for Waynesburg, which was Division Three. He was on the offensive line, and I remember him saying as soon as he ended his career, he lost like 80 pounds. And and I asked him, I was like, dude, what, what was happening? And he said he had had to make himself sick from eating like his whole oh, yeah. career to shoving food and not wanting to eat more. But his coach was like, and I think he was only like 250, 260. He wasn't like you, but <laughs> – and, and you could go even all the way up to the pro future Hall of Famer, Joe Thomas. That's probably a better connection because you would know that. He was uh, um, the best player on the Bengals, which wasn't hard to do, I guess, but the best player on the Bengals for, for a long, long time, for over a decade. And he had it too. He was up over 300 pounds. And once he retired, as soon as he retired, he lost a lot of weight. So I actually do think it's very health conscious if you're playing offensive, defensive line. Sometimes you see linemen – once they stop playing, they put on another hundred pounds, and now they're oh, yeah. over five hundred pounds. Now they're really overweight. So I'm glad you and Joe Thomas and Nick Anley all went sort of the more healthy route. So, um, speaking of that, you did mention that you got into BJJ and, and other forms that can lead to MMA. Are you purely kind of focused on um, kickboxing to, to eventually maybe transition to pro, or at least continue to go kickboxing? Or at some point, would you like to move into MMA considering you do have some of those other skills. I would love to continue keep kickboxing. I want to see how far I can go undefeated, see what I can accomplish. I, I have one belt from IKF. I would love to have another belt or two from other, other events, other organizations. Um, Muay Thai, a Muay Thai fight down the road would be an awesome, just like a bucket list to have going pro wise. I'm not hundred percent sure about that just because I'm very nervous about my back. I, I, <laughs> I eventually want to have kids, grandkids, and I want to be able to run around with them. MMA, I love MMA to death, but I know somebody picked me up, slammed me down, I'm, it's game over for me. So sure. I just I just don't want to risk it. Well, I, I think that's a very that's a very wise future focus. You want you want to make sure that you enjoy your sport and that you see where it goes, but there are bigger things. Every single Hall of Famer at, you know, at the top of whatever sport that is at some point was no longer a professional athlete, you know, and, and a lot of times uh, it, you can be short sighted. So I'm glad you have sort of that future wife, kids, grandkids, your health is the most important. We've seen that become more popular. Um, of course, because we're doing this live, I'm blanking, but the quarterback, uh, no, no, mm, the quarterback uh, that quit. <laughs> The Colts quarterback? Colts quarterback, man. Andrew Luck. We got yeah, it. Yeah, Com yeah. Combined, we got it. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I think for, of course, he had made a lot of money because he was already a really good quarterback. But I think Andrew Luck, who I believe already had like advanced degrees and was a very cerebral guy, realized that because I, I think he was pretty upfront that it was head injury type stuff and he was, well, other health too, but he was worried about his longevity as a man and as a husband and a father. So I do think that's a good balance to make. and and. I think Andrew Luck and others, you know, pointed out there is important. So whether you go all the way up and continue in this or not, it's great having you on the show. What was it like getting that IKF belt since you mentioned that you already have a title? It was a dream come true. Like that was jaw dropping. Like I was, of course, you know, nervous hell going to ring, having to fight two people who had better record than me, had better experience than I did. And being able to obtain that belt at the end was a giant life goal. That was like, more comp i felt more accomplished from that i've i've well, graduated college graduated from grad school that belt i'm more proud of than my own degrees which some people might hate me for that but i put in so much work body mind for that 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 thing i'm never going to lose that thing that memory is always going to be in my mind never giving that belt up well that's cool and it, it does show because some people will kind of ask um about belts and things and i think knowing the work you had to do to get that belt is what matters, you know, oh, yeah. and, and, and there's meaning there. And similar with college degrees, it, we all know that the degree doesn't matter as much as the journey to get it. And mm -hmm. the diligence, I think, you know, I was just talking to somebody about chat GBT. And when I graduated from college 17 years ago, I'm so glad the internet wasn't what it is oh, yeah. because I encourage everybody out there. Do not cheat. If you become a cheater, even though it'll, I'm sure it'll be easier with chat GBT to write your papers for you. You have, you have shortchanged yourself. Um, and, and, but I do think that's one of the things out there about getting a degree. It's not so much getting it. It's 
how you got the degree and then what you're going to do with it that matters because you're right uh, a, a lot of people you know if they've taken shortcuts or if they weren't as diligent to get their degree they've kind of set themselves up um, and, and it feels a little hollow so it's always what effort you have to put out to make something valuable so for you you've kind of talked about the fight coming up uh you said that you want to keep going in kickboxing maybe muay thai is there an upcoming tournament in late summer early fall that's a big deal uh whether that's wks or ikf again like what what are your what are your thoughts for after this fight so that's what my uh, co uh coach vince and i were talking about so basically after this fight we're looking at either doing ikf in atlanta which is the world tournament or the um what was the other one you just said w wk WK, yeah yes that other one too and then we were also talking about um the one that's in uh virginia it's called um not not the cage fight in Virginia. I'm going to um, T, uh, TCB, TCB. Oh, uh, that's one I don't know. Okay. So we were talking about that too for a local one more towards like that at the end of the year, but we're looking at WKA or IKF for, um, at the end of summer because we have a couple other teammates also doing it. Shout out Tim Kang. He just got silver in the Waco tournament this past weekend, and he's he put it on. He put on a great um, show, and it was, it was amazing. Well, congratulations to him, man. And it's also cool we were talking about that team environment. You mm -hmm. you feel like you win when your teammate wins. And that's a very unique yeah. thing, whether that be BJJ or kickboxing or Muay Thai or MMA. And I think that's something that people don't really know unless you're in a gym or around a gym. There's mm -hmm. kind of two big atmosphere changes. Once, a, a gym that doesn't have active fighters, when they get active fighters, that changes the atmosphere of the gym. And obviously, Vince and you guys, you, you guys are very active. But having active fighters, having fights coming up is a whole gym environment. Even if somebody that never fights, that gym environment's different when there's active fighters. And then, of course, when fighters win and you and you have a gym with wins coming into the gym, even if somebody doesn't take a fight, that, that changes the atmosphere. So that's very cool. Well, I am honored to have you on not only this show for the first time, MMA Fancast, I always try to keep track of who's making debut, but your first ever interview. So hopefully that kind of got this process off to a good start. I'd love to continue to follow your career and, and shout out to your coach Vince for not only being an incredible coach, but also setting us up for you to come on because I think that goes a long way. I, I'm always willing to take people messaging me or texting me who think they have a fighter or have somebody that they're interested in having on the show. So Thanks so much to you. You've been listening to Luke Payson for MMA Fancast and first time guest of the show, Sean Collins. Sean, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you so much, Luke. Honored to be on here. Thank Honored you again. Honored to have you. You take care, bud. Best skills to you. June 24th, a kickboxing fight for stellar fights. You take care, bud.